Hebrews chapter 11. Get myself there. Now, this lesson here, I took and kind of divided up in two parts. We did first part last week of chapter 11. I'm going to have a few slides having to, to show you what we did last week, just to kind of refresh our memory, because I know it's over 24 hours, and we kind of forget a few things. Sometimes if it's over an hour, we kind of forget a few things. I know how that works, too. Uh, you know, talk about this, snow, this rain. Uh, I was looking kind of looking for snow. Because I was ready to get my snow cream stuff out. I was ready to get all that ready. You all have snow cream? Anybody? Everybody know what snow cream is? Anybody not know what it is? Any Yankees in here don't know what it is? Is that what it is? Yeah. We do it all the time. I love that stuff. All right, this is what, uh, lesson from Lesson 10, but we're on Lesson 11 now. This is how it's broke down for us. We've already done the first two parts of this last week. Chapter 11 is divided up here, uh, but we'll go over this in a moment here a little bit. So what is faith? This, this is the chapter of faith, the Hall of Faith, the Hall of Fame, I guess you may, the uh, Hall of Faith here we refer to, chapter on faith. So what is faith from the Scripture's view? State. I'm sorry? Okay, so what is the scriptural definition? And it's, it's right here, verse 1, isn't it? What is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, who is writing? <clears throat> the writer is writing to whom? Jewish believers. And what are they struggling with? What are they dealing with? Judaism that they came from, all right? And he's talking about what? He's trying to emphasize that Christ is better than everything, you know? That's what we've been going, all these chapters, talking about how Christ is better than everything. Everything there is is better than that. Better than the way that you used to live. Because Judaism was a way of, of uh, ritualism and all that they had to go through. But now he, they're being persecuted, are they not? And so they're being persecuted, so he's trying to encourage them You've accepted Christ by how? By faith. So you have to live by faith. And in this chapter, he does what? What does he do here in this chapter? He encourages them. And how is he encouraging them? He's given them examples of specific people. By faith, they did such and such. By faith. He's trying to give them examples, examples of people they should know about. Because they were, they are, are Jewish heritage, so they know of these people, you know. So that's what he's sharing with them. <clears throat> I took this lesson, go back a little bit, and I took this lesson. I don't know if you all see this. I got copies of this up here for you. Um, but this is kind of like a timeline. I use, always like using this timeline here for me. It helps me to see things in relationship. But I don't know how well you see this, but this is, this is Job here, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Ruth, Judges, you know, Saul, David, Solomon. And it's, you know, the, the kingdom is divided here. That's what it's talking about, the United Kingdom, the divided kingdom, the single kingdom. You know, they go into captivity down here. Oop, I don't know where my marker went to. Just went away somewhere. But that's how it's laid out. And, of course, the time of the cross down here, of our death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So I have samples of this for you if you want to copy this. So what I've got here for you is this is how this lesson is broken up in, in chapter 11. When he's talking about these, these heroes of faith, it's kind of broke down like this. He touches on the first part here, the faith in the primeval times, about those, uh, those in that time period there. Faith in the patriotical times, the time of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Then he talks about, and that's what we'll be dealing with today, is the faith in the conquest times, times of the judges, Times of Moses, or right before the judges. I'm, just, I'm sorry, this is before judges. This is time of Moses and Joshua before they go into the, going into the land and conquering the land, of course. And the last section here is the time, faith in crisis times. Of course, that talks from all the way from this time, from, from the time of the judges, Ruth and judges, all the way through up to the present time of when. The writer was writing. About 62 AD, around that range. When this book was written. So he's writing from, about, from all that time, all these th examples of faith. So we're going to talk on the last two things, where I did the first two last week. 
This is what we talked about last week. I broke this out for you to show you by these verses, <coughs> the, the items that we touched on about these. And I thought it was interesting. I don't, you know, the Lord talked about it Wednesday when Brother Byron Fox is here, talking about Noah. And we talked about that as well in Sunday school last week. Is your faith impacting the world? Is your faith impacting others? As he pointed out on Wednesday night, Byron Fox was here. This is the other part we talked about, the time of the second, you know, as you see here, the patriotic times. Patriotic, not patriotic, but patriarch times. Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. These are things that get you thinking about your faith. You know, examples of these people's faith, you know, thinking about, because for him to list this, they should have some idea, not just the name of the person, not just, well, I know Abraham's name, I know Sarah's name, but what about them did you know? And he's trying to point out to them. And some of it he doesn't really explain a lot about, does he? But some things he does. The writer of the Hebrews. So now we're going to pick up. Here's the, the key verse. So let's get to this. I got the key verse. The key verse is, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That diligently seek him. You can't please God. But without faith, you've got to have faith in him. He wants us to trust him, does he not? That's what he wants us to do, to trust him. That's how we get saved is by faith. We live by faith in our lives. So he's trying to encourage these, these Christian believers, these, these Jewish Christian believers, about <clears throat> living by faith. And he gives examples, and he continues on with those examples we're going to talk about this morning here for you. So, if you learn to, in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, if you would please, down here in verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Though he doesn't let name their par his parents' names, here's their parents, Moses' uh, parents' name, Amram and, and Jochebed, which is found in Exodus chapter 6, verse 20. So about them, he mentions them. He mentions, doesn't mention them by their name, but he says Moses' parents. So what does he say about Moses' parents? By faith, they did what? They were, an of faith they were an example of faith themselves. Because think of the time when Moses was born. What was the time when he was born? What was happening at that time? Who was killing the babies? The Egyptians. They were commanded by Pharaoh to kill all the Egyptian boys. And here they are, here's, a, here's a, a, a Hebrew family, husband and wife have a new baby boy, and they do what? Well, the law says we're to kill him. But what do they do? By faith, they do what's right to protect their son. Sometimes the law is not right, is it? Because of what it's doing. And trying, he's, what is Pharaoh trying to do? He's trying to eliminate the possibility of the, Jew, of the Jews from creating and, and, and keeping on and on. I think it's another tactic of Satan trying to stop them, is what he's trying to do. But he says here, by faith, Moses, uh, uh, where is that, verse 20, when he was, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Now, would you have been, how would you have been if you were the mother and father of a new baby boy and having to hide him, but they said, you know what? We're trusting our Lord to take care of him, to protect him, to keep him safe. Their focus was on the Lord. Their faith was in the Lord to do this for them. So what motivates you for your family, your faith or your fear? Should not we live, be living by faith in things that help our family? to guide and direct and help and protect, you know, trusting the Lord to take care of our family, you know. The next one, the next here is Moses himself. I already jumped on this, but look here. Moses, verse, by faith, Moses, when he was, uh, verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the, than the treasures in Egypt. For he had, he had respect unto the repent, re, recompense of the reward. Yeah, verse 27. 
For by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. His faith did what to him? Hint here. He chose differently. Can you imagine? And then we, we, we hear the, about Moses' life, but he was raised in where? He was raised in a house of, 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 of uh, anything he could want. Luxury, whatever you might say, riches, everything was available to him. You know? But that's not what he, he said, that's not, that's, for, that's not for me. Because it says here, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to, to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach, reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Verse 27, for by faith he forsook Egypt. Not just leaving it, but he forsake all of that. That takes a big step, doesn't it? How tempted that any one of us would be if we had, we were in that position. You said, oh, I, I could have done, I've been just like Moses. Could you? Some people, and I don't know if anybody does that in this room, but anybody playing the lottery, and just happens to hit on a big, big number here and comes out multimillionaire, will it change your life? Will it make a difference to you? Will it change how you behave? You know? But here Moses had everything, and he did what? He turned away from it. Turned away from that. Because his eye was where? Not on the riches of Egypt, not on the fame and everything that Egypt had, everything at his disposal. He said he didn't want to do what? Uh, verse 23. Rather suffer, he's su choosing rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He saw a little bit further past the present. He saw further on. You know, there's more to life than just living here in this, this, this palace. There's more to this, you know. And he knew that he was part of those people that were out there being uh, suffering. He was, brother, he was brother to those people out there who were being slaves. He knew that. And he chose to, I'm going to go with them. If it means I lose all of this, but I'm going to have my eyes where? On the Lord. The same Lord they got their eyes on and should have their eyes on. But by faith, he, he just turned everything away. Has your faith resulted in a change of life? Now, I got up here, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. Anybody quote that right off the bat? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That should be in our life, shouldn't it? And that's what it was with Moses' life. Okay, this next passage here, verses 28. If I go too fast and you want to say something, just raise your hand and wave at me or something. Get my attention. I might move a little fast sometimes. Let me back this up. Let's see so you can see this first. 28. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of, the, of blood, lest he, he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, uh, which... The Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. This is, I put here the Israelites themselves, the Israelites that were following Moses. Don't you think that was by faith that they were doing this? By faith they did the Passover? I mean, they were instructed, you know, Moses was instructed, instructed the people to have this, this is what we're to do. Now, if you were of those, you were some of the Israelites there, and Moses tells you this, he said, <laughs> I ain't doing that. That's, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What's going to happen? What's going to happen when the, the death angel goes through and takes your firstborn away? Yeah. That's by faith also they had to do that. And it was by faith that they also, we're going to follow this guy named Moses who's following God, the God that we believe in. We're going to follow also, you know? They did that night. What if a bunch of them just said, we're not going. It's, it's better. We'll just well stay here and stay slaves and we'll just, just stay right here where we're at. There's no indication that any of them did that, is there? There's no indication that any of a group of them said, we're not going. They all moved together. Now, I don't know how, what the numbers of people. I've heard different ranges of numbers of how many thousands, even a couple of million people moved at one time with Moses at this movement. But then all do this to do it by faith. Because by faith they did what? 
they did the Passover by faith. They, they'd never done this before. Never even known about this. But, but were instructed to do this Passover. They did this by faith. They'd never left the land of Egypt, going to a land that they had never seen. They'd never been there. But they're going to follow and go by faith. Does your faith cause you to trust the Lord, the leading of the Lord in the seemingly impossible situations? Do we not sometimes face, it just seems like an impossible situation you're dealing with. It's like you're trying to figure it out. Well, this is the way it should go, and this is what, it, but it can't happen. It won't work. You know, you've got to get to the point, just get on your knees and say, Lord, I don't, it's, it's, it's beyond me. You know, the Lord wants to hear that. He wants to hear that from you, that you realize it's beyond you. You cannot do it. Totally trusting him and relying upon him by faith. Rahab. <clears throat> by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab Perish not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Who is this Rahab? Find outstanding lady of the neighborhood? She was a harlot. Looked down upon in society's realm. But she by faith did what? The spies came in and she already knew, she had already, they had heard talk about, they already, the people had already heard about these Israelites over there. And they were already in fear of that. But she allowed these spies to come in and, help, and come into the, in their place there. And she let them escape. She protected them and let them escape out. And by faith, she did what? Remember that cord she had? The red cord? She used to put that out there so when they did come back, because the spies told them they would be back. And you need to hang this out there to protect your, and have your family here. Everybody that's in this house will be safe. That's by faith. You think about that. Something is totally different they never experienced before. But meeting these guys who are from these Israelites people by faith and protecting them by faith. She could have just easily gave them up like anybody else, but she didn't do that. But it's by faith, the scripture says. Do you act on your faith. That's what my point is. And she acted on that faith. That's what she did. The next time period. From the judges, a king, and a prophets. This is a whole section here. <clears throat> Interesting, but it says in verse 32, down to what, 32 to 34, he says, and what shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and, and, uh, and Samson and of Jephna, and of David also, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Down to verse 34. Quenched the violence of fires, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, waxed valid in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And let's stop right there. The writer says, I don't have enough time to list everybody, basically. But isn't it interesting what he does here? Who is David? Who is David? The king. You know there's more written about David in the Old Testament than any other person written in the Old Testament was David. Yet he just says David. He doesn't talk about the, anything about David. You know, David we think, what do you think about when you hear David? King David. What do you think about David? When you hear about David, what can you tell me something that you've heard about him from the scripture? Goliath, okay, that's one thing you know about. Did he do that by faith? What else about David? Chased by Saul. Chased by Saul? I mean, there's a lot of things you start thinking. Well, I know this about David. I know this about David. There's a lot of things you think about David. What about them that have been trained in, 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 in the scriptures that they know, these Jewish believers? You know, he just says David. He doesn't talk about Solomon. He doesn't talk about the other kings, but talks about the, one of their greatest kings is David. Right there, briefly. Just mentions him briefly. But he goes through this list here of the judges, some of the judges here. And then he talks about Samuel. Of course, Samuel is who? One of their greatest prophets. One of the greatest prophets around. 
And then he says, I cannot list all of them. But he's trying to point out, there are many of these that lived by faith. And they did a lot of things. And a lot of things happened because of them. So what is your faith in light of triumphs? Now, what I just read to you, did you see that in verses uh, 33 through 34? Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed violence in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. What do you see there? These things that are listed there. We'll show it to you in a second here to compare together in a minute. But don't you see these? These are kind of like triumphs. These are like victories, are they not? These are like great things by faith. Great things that are happening. The others. He says others in verse 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured. And others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better re resurrection. And others that had trial of true mockings and of scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, in mountains, and in dens, and in caves of the earth. How is your faith in light of tragedies? This whole other list is what? What do you see there? He likes, he tells, there's, this, there's triumphs and there's tragedies. Now, those of us who are saved, don't we think everything should be just great? I mean, don't we? I shouldn't have any problems. But do we have problems come up in our lives? Do we have tragedies? Well, we've never been. None of us have probably been tormented or, of course, you haven't been sawed asunder because that means you're cut in half. You know, we haven't gone through those things. But are you destitute? Are you dealing with other things? I mean, this, this is pretty drastic here. But he's pointing out these, these people who have had triumphs in their faith and there's people who have tragedies. But it happens to what? Everyone. People of faith. We believe the Lord, Lord, you're going to take care of us and protect us and all that. And then some things do happen, don't they? Don't they? I mean, I might talk to myself in this classroom as just to me. I know I ask a lot of questions. I know I do that. And you all say, you know, quit asking questions first thing in the morning. I don't have a cup of coffee in my hand. I'm going to show you a list here. I think it breaks this down. And show it. I didn't come up with this list, but I thought it was pretty neat. And I saw the list here. And I thought it was interesting. But I'll show you this list. Triumphs of the faithful and tragedies of the faithful. They conquered kingdoms. I already read this to you. Right, wrought righteousness. Obtained promises. Shut the mouths of lions. Quenched fire. Escaped the sword. Became mighty in war. Re received back their dead by resurrection. They were tortured. Mockings and uh, uh, scourgings they went through. Chains and imprisonment. Stoned and sawed asunder. Tempted. Slain with the sword destitute, afflicted, and wandered around. Which side would you like your life to be on all the time? I would like mine to be on the triumph side. I'm about you. I'm not really wanting to be on the tragedy side of this. But there's no guarantee I'm not going to be on the tragedy side of this. Because he's listing these people that by faith, there are those who did suffer and do suffer by faith. You know, he's pointing out to these Hebrew Christians, they're doing what? They're, going, they're being persecuted. They're being challenged for their faith. They believe in Christ. And they used to be Jewish uh, participants at the temple and all the things that went through. They're not doing that anymore. So now they're being mocked. They're being challenged. And here the writer's trying to point out, faith doesn't discriminate if you're going to have good times and bad times. But the idea is to what? To have faith in the Lord. But, within, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Verse 39 and 40. And these all having obtained a good report through faith 
received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. I noticed this in verse 2. I don't know if that's why I point that up. Verse 2, if you see that in verse 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. By what did they obtain a good report? Verse 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. What was it? By faith. It's by faith they gained, they obtained a good report. And here he says again, these all having obtained a good report through faith. Isn't it interesting that this chapter, he starts with that point about the good report, and at the end he ends with the, talking about the good report. And in between us talking about faith all through that, the good report. Interesting, this, this phrase here, obtained, uh, where is it at? Uh, verse 39. Having obtained a good report. If you have a strong concordance, it comes from this word here. That whole phrase comes as one word. And what does that word look like? Martyr. Looks like that, doesn't it? That's where it comes. That's where the word comes from, from that Greek word there. That Greek word, you know, that's the English writing. I can't write Greek, so it doesn't, doesn't mean anything to us anyways. We wrote Greek up here. It wouldn't mean anything to us, would it? But that's what it's talking about, the witness. It's a being a witness. And this word has been translated throughout the scriptures as witness. Where's that right now? As witness, martyr, martyrs, record. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul, that to spare you I come not as yet unto Corinth. Philippians 1, 8, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you in all my bowels of Jesus Christ. Uh, the other verse for, uh, you know, where it talks about martyrs in chapter, Acts chapter 22, verse 20. And when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed, I was also standing by, consenting unto his death, and kept the remnant of them that slew him. Witness. Romans 1 9. For God is my witness, whom I, pres- I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. This thing about being a, having obtained a good report is, is like a, there's witnesses to this. And I thought it was interesting that even God is a, is a record to this. So by faith, this is what makes a difference. It's not what you, all the things you might be thinking you have, possessions you might have. It's by faith is what? How you're living. So, to wrap this up. So what do you see about their faith? Abraham and Isaac and Rebecca and the spies. What do you see about their faith? Anything stands out to you? I just pulled, found these pictures just to help us think a little bit. But. I'm sorry? Abraham was very strong. Okay. His faith was strong. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay, good point. We're going to turn to another passage, and it's not in Hebrews either. My son already knows this. I mentioned this to him the other day, so he knows this. Faith and works. James chapter 2, if you'll turn there. James chapter 2, verse 14. And we'll come back to this 11 here in a minute. What doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works. Can faith save him? If a man, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to their body, what doeth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But thou, but what, but wilt thou, man, wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seeing thou how faith wrought with his works, 
and by faith and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body cannot, body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, if you want to turn back to chapter 11, that's fine, we'll be there. So what did he point out about Abraham and Isaac and, and, and Rahab? Uh, Rahab. Three acts there, was, there, was, there was action to this faith, was there not? There was action to this faith. Because I thought it was interesting, we've seen this passage before. Uh, verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But pointing out to us who, who have faith in God should be what? Living by faith. And I thought back in chapter 11 of Hebrews, when he points out, the writer points out about each one of these persons, he's pointing out about them what? Their faith resulted in action. Did it not? When you think about that's why I asked you about David. What did you know about David? Y'all knew a lot more about David than you probably do some of the other people. But you knew immediately David and Goliath. Okay? David and Saul. I mean, you knew certain things. But there was actions in his life that proved his, his faith, I think. Are you with me on that? Or am I off base on this? They lived by faith. They showed that by faith. They're, they're examples of faith. And that's what the writer's pointing out. Back in chapter 11, if you want to turn back there, he said, well, too far. Hebrews chapter 11. Get myself back there. Chapter 11. I mean, he goes through this by just verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. I mean, I know I didn't talk about that, but just think about that. They did this by faith, walking around like they were told to do. I mean, do you think about the impossibilities of some of these things these people went through and they still did it because it was not, it didn't seem possible. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't seem, okay, we're going to walk around this wall of Jericho and blow this trumpet. You know, you got this huge wall of Jericho. But what is it happens to it on the seventh day? It came down flat. Because it was by faith the people did that. It's by faith that Rahab did what she did and put the cord out there. It's by faith that Abraham took his son. God says, take, take your son, your only son, an offering. It's by faith they did those things. And that's what the writer's trying to instill upon them. It's by faith that they did the things they did, for examples. And that should be an encouragement to, to them. Hopefully it was, and I think it was. And it should be an encouragement to us. That when we have challenges and things that seem impossible sometimes to us in our lives, that by faith we do what? We don't act foolishly, but by faith we're trusting, we've got our eyes on the Lord. And we're looking towards Him to help us through these matters. Be it in, I don't have it up there, but be it in triumphs or be it in tragedies, we're still trusting Him no matter what. That's my last point. Anybody have any comment, any question? Trust the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Yep. That's what it does. Anybody else? Yes. And, I, and, and, and when he wrote to them, he's, and I'm glad you brought that up because I had this note in here. It's a good thing I flipped this page again. It reminded me on verses 39 and 40 here. But when he wrote to them, 
those Christians have already known that Christ has come and, 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 and was come and crucified and buried and rose again. But those Old Testament saints said what? They were looking forward to that. And so I'm going to read from here. This will make probably make better sense. This is from David Cloud's book. He quotes from Ironside, H.R. Ironside, about these two verses here. God having, uh, let's see where it says, in other words, talking about verses 40 and all that, he says, in, in other words, we may say of Old Testament saints that their souls were all safe in God's keeping. Their eternal salvation was absolutely assured, but the work upon which all this rested had not yet taken place. I'll talk about the Old Testament saints. They were looking forward to that. They were, if we may so speak, saved on credit. In the cross, their responsibility was discharged. And now they, with us, are made perfect. You know, they weren't just made, they weren't made perfect ahead. But what do you say here? Now the cross has taken place. We are made perfect together in Christ. I, couldn't, I looked at this verse, and that's the only one I can find made, made more sense to me, is just seeing that right there, that note. God having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. Because they were looking for the cross. The cross has taken place. You know, the cross, the time of the Lord Jesus Christ has taken place. Anybody else? Any comments? Any other questions? True. Not with our little thinking minds, because our little minds just don't work too well. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? I don't know about you, when you read through this chapter, you see the challenges these people went through and how they, by faith, they, went, they got through them and how the Lord blessed them through it. Anybody else? Anybody else? We haven't had the first bell. You're getting out before the first bell, the second bell. I mean, you are ahead of class. Anybody else know that? I think next week my son will be taking chapter 12 for me, picking up on that. Hopefully you're learning something from this book of Hebrews. I know we said at the very beginning the book of Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians, but it's here for us. We can't just throw it out. It's here for us. It's here for us to learn and to learn from it, to help us in our lives. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer.